it is a word we hear very often to describe a group of young people. We think of them as active, energetic, optimistic, idealistic, and even irresponsible sometimes. But we never think of them as powerful. And this is the notion I want to change today. If you look around or simply pick a newspaper, you will observe that the world is on fire. There is no easy way to put it. The world is on fire. Hurricanes, natural disasters, protests, wars, everywhere you look, you will see injustice in its various forms. And amidst this storm, there is one group that is stepping up louder than before, the youth. That social media app on your phone is proof of this growing activism. The youth of today are aware, vocal, and unyielding. They are passionate and intolerant. This is a study conducted in the May of last year by PEW Research Center. It shows the percentage of US social media users who say they have done each of the following on social media in the last year. 34% have taken part in a group that shares an interest in an issue or a cause. 26% have encouraged others to take action on an issue important to them, while 14% have looked up rallies and protests in their area, and 14% have changed their profile pictures or used hashtags to support an issue. But interestingly, nearly half, 46%, have done either of the following on social media in the last year alone. If this is not enough proof, let's look at another study done by Morrison and Tyre in 2018. It shows the percentage of people who are interested in activism, informal activism, basically not politics, but not institutionalized politics, but one informally done. Now, as you can see, the green line represents young adults, and the blue line represents older adults. The interest in activism among the young adults is on the rise, and contrastingly, the activism, uh, activism among older people are declining. So what is the cause of this growing activism? Why are these young people getting so agitated? What is exactly happening? So um, how many in the audience today are parents? Can you all please show of hands? Uh, how many of you all are parents to teenagers? OK, quite a few. But you all must be very familiar that they go through this rebellion phase, where they like to go against the norms, against the rules. Now, this has escalated into something much bigger. This has escalated, this rebellion has become against social injustice. And this is what we've come to call woke culture. Woke culture is a cultural shift. One, where young people like me, we are demanding greater level of awareness about social justice issues. We are intolerant about language, behavior, or system that can, systems that can be considered as discriminatory or offensive. So what is happening exactly? Now, to understand how prevalent this culture is, let me take you to the West. Now, the UK government in the January of last year, 2023, has committed to a goal, a target of net zero carbon emission. But you know what led to this declaration? It was not the UN. It was not any country bloc. It was, it was not even a powerful country. It was the youth of that country, youth of United Kingdom. The Fridays for Future movement, which was advocated by Greta Thunberg, but supported by more than one million youth of that country, they led to the US. They pushed the UK government. They came on the streets. They skipped schools on Fridays to push the UK government to take action against climate change. And mind you, achieving net zero carbon emission is as for a developed country like the UK is as difficult as making chai without water. So maybe the youth is powerful, right? So what is fueling this power? What is giving them this energy? Number one, they are aware. At their disposal, they have this wealth of knowledge. They have human encyclopedias in the form of AI models at their fingertips. And this is what I call the 3D model of knowledge. 
So when people in the audience, for example, if you all are in your 50s or 60s, in your time, you might recollect that you had knowledge in its physical form. I mean, what I mean to say is books, newspapers, television. The transfer of knowledge was one way, one dimensional. Then came the two dimensional model of knowledge. The internet was born, Google was born. Now you can control what knowledge you want. You can also ask more questions and you can interact with that knowledge. But now is the time for three dimensional knowledge. These AI models on our phones, computers, laptops, they can not only give you information, they can disseminate that information, they can break down that information, analyze, they can help you understand how that information is applicable in your context and what not. Crazy, right? So with this level of awareness, naturally they're even more aware about social injustice around, happening around them. So when you're more aware, you're also, you, there's also a growing desire in you to fight that change. Now this explains why there is a desire or spark inside of them. But what is making them intolerant? They are sensitive. You will notice that young people get hurt very easily. But it's not because they are weak or soft. It is because social media is viewing, literally viewing a mindset inside of them. A mindset that is people pleasing. They like to please people. And Social media as a platform, you know, everybody will judge you. It is, you're literally up for judgment about what you wear, how you look, the places you go, even the music you listen to. Now combine the need to be liked with judgment. You become sensitive. You're more prone to what other people think. You are more sensitive to their opinion. But ironically, this sensitivity is empowering them. How you may ask? When they are faced with social injustice, they take more offense. They are hurt more easily, so they take more offense. And unlike our previous generations that had a let it go attitude, these young people, they respond with retaliation. They don't sit quiet. And when they want to do that now, social media becomes their weapon. Social media gives them a platform to do that. Now this explains why they are intolerant. But why are they passionate? What is driving this passion towards fighting injustice? They are in pursuit of purpose. If again, you observe young people, you will see that they search deeper meaning in everything. Even in the work that they do, they search where is this ultimately leading. Even in the career path they choose, they are wanting to know, okay, what is my purpose? And this is happening because traditional systems like career path, religion, or social norms don't satisfy or fulfill them anymore. They are searching for something much deeper. They have aspirations that are even bigger than themselves. So they search for purpose. And this is because of the way humans have evolved. Our needs are no longer shelter, food, and clothing. We want something much bigger. We want to leave an impact. Even me, for example, when I'm at a stage in life where I have to make life-altering decisions, like I have to make a decision that can change the course of my life. But you know what my starting point is? My starting point is not my current education or my current skill set. My starting point is, what do I find the most meaning in? And then I trace my way back. So when young people are so much in pursuit of purpose, injustice either becomes a hurdle in their way, or fighting that injustice becomes their purpose. For people like Greta Thunberg and Malala, fighting injustice became their purpose. But for somebody like me, gender pay parity, work discrimination are all barriers in the way of achieving my purpose. So they become even more passionate to fight that injustice. And lastly, if you notice, the youth is unyielding. Unyielding, relentless. They don't stop until action is taken. And this is where a problem might arise. Often, Woke culture movements evolve into, evolve into something destructive, like cancel culture, or censorship, or online harassment. People find their outlet through these means. And this is where problem can arise. Because it's one thing to call out social injustice, but another, if your harmful actions silence others or ruin reputations, that can be a problem. Let me be clear, we need social movements. We need people calling out injustice. But when this hyper-awareness leads to and spirals into destructive behavior, we have a problem. And here I am today to propose a solution, a much needed solution. 
we need to give the youth a seat at the table we need to give we need to increase youth representation in places where it matters currently too many decisions that affect the young people like climate change or an education policy are made by people who don't experience its impact immediately or directly or ever maybe and there is a disconnect there is a disconnect between experiences of the young and the decision making power of the old we are letting the scale tip in favor of age and experience and almost ignoring the voice of the youth and this needs to change we need to hear their voice let's understand let's imagine if we bring the youth the kind of solutions we'll have you know these giants like google 50% of its workforce is under 30 and we know what a giant google is how how incredibly successful it is in our landscape pantagonia is an outdoor clothing brand it has a strong focus on sustainability and when it started aligning its purpose to those that youth the young ones care about its sales increased by 30% this is the power of the youth but let's just not stop at corporates even governments we need the youth in governments we need them not to just be heard we need them to shape policies what i mean by that is when young people are involved in the government they are already leaders from the outside they are already leading movements they are already leading campaigns from the outside but imagine the power of channeling this energy through within like through legislation through policy reforms through governance we won't just be empowering them but we will ensure that all our future decisions are based on empathy on inclusive inclusivity and on innovation you know even elders when they sit if there are any elders in the audience you might find them saying that the youth know way more than we did at our age bachcho ko sab pata hai so why not take action on this obvious truth give the youth a voice where it matters to truly reap the benefits of woke culture we need to listen to them let them not burden the let them not shoulder the burden of social justice alone crying on streets or shouting on social media give them a voice we need them in boardrooms we need them in governments we need them in schools we need them to shape the policies that they're trying to change so the youth is speaking it is our choice whether to listen to them or not thank you